welcome to my channel. I am Sarah. If you don't know my history, my husband and I did IVF twice. The first time it was a major failure. Well, it wasn't like majorly a failure. It was a major failure when it came to my egg quality. And then the second time it went a little bit better and we are pregnant now. I'm actually 29 weeks today. And so these are the things that I did to help with my egg quality and they also made me feel like I was doing everything I could to make my second fresh round of IVF go better. Uh, the first round of IVF we didn't have any embryos make it to the blastocyst stage and we ended up transferring to um, mor Morula's on day five and so that wasn't it's not so great when you transfer that and you don't have any blasts and we didn't have any make it to freeze and so we had to do another round and um the first thing that i did was transfer clinics because i felt like my first ivf clinic didn't take me seriously they didn't the doctor didn't even think i had pcos mm -hmm which I do, and um, she just didn't take that seriously, and I don't think she took that into consideration when we did stims, and so the protocol that she gave me might have not been the best for PCOS. But um, I did switch clinics, and so if you're wondering if you should switch your clinic, uh, it can't hurt to have a consultation with another doctor. And um, I'm really glad that I switched because I felt like the second clinic, the doctor was uh, very upfront and honest. And uh, he told us that if we had another round where my eggs were as bad as they were the first round, that we might want to look into donor eggs. And um, yeah, so he was pretty honest up front, but luckily, the second round we ended up getting pregnant and we have one frozen. Other things that I did um, to prepare for my second round of IVF, I read It Starts With The Egg by Rebecca Fett. Uh, I think that's a great book if you are trying to improve your egg quality. She outlines um, things that you could change, um, supplements you can take, uh, different ways of eating. And she does it for different kinds of infertility, like um, PCOS, or she has one for unexplained, one for um, low uh, egg reserve. And so I really think that book is great if you haven't read it. And the gist of that book is um, you have to start doing things at least three to four months before your egg retrieval for the changes to really take effect because if you do it um, s closer to your egg retrieval your, it doesn't give your eggs time to um, benefit from those changes. I also stopped drinking soda and I did all of these things um, four to five months before my uh, egg retrieval. So I stopped drinking soda, I stopped drinking alcohol, I went on a very low carb diet. I did the keto diet. Um, my IVF doctor recommends doing the paleo diet. So different. there's a lot of different kinds of low carb diets and different names, but I was on the keto, but I wouldn't say that you necessarily have to go on the keto to improve your egg quality. I stopped eating out so much. I exercised more probably three to four four times a week. Before that I didn't really exercise that much so it was a difference for me. And then because I started eating better and exercising more I lost 20 pounds in those four months. And so I felt better and uh, I felt better about myself losing 20 pounds. I stopped prenatals but I started taking individual um, vitamins instead of taking one prenatal and so I was getting a lot more of vitamin D. There have been studies that um, being low in vitamin D ha can, it can affect your egg quality. So I was taking a lot more vitamin D than I was before and I also started taking CoQ10 and that has also been linked to improving your egg quality. 
I will put the rest of the supplements I was taking in the description box below so I don't have to bore you with a list of supplements, just reading it off to you. Uh, I also had a preconception appointment with a maternal fetal specialist uh, and he actually referred me to the IVF doctor and I'm seeing him now for my pregnancy. So if there is someone in your area that does preconception appointments, I feel like that could be useful. I was I went to this maternal fetal medicine specialist because my really good friend saw him during her high risk pregnancy and so I knew that he did these preconception appointments and so I met with him and talked to him and he helped me find my IVF doctor. I started to do IVF meditations and affirmations and I heard about it because Amanda from Strength Beyond the Storm was doing these IVF meditations before she did her round of IVF and she just had her baby and so I found these on Amazon Music but I'm sure it's on iTunes and I looked up hypnosis for IVF but I feel like that helped a little bit to keep me calm because you have to repeat after her like my eggs are good, like something along those lines. It's not that exact thing, but it's something like that. I reduced as much stress as possible before my cycle. I stopped taking um, clients like for my business and um, just, I would say, if you can, lighten your workload at work and just reducing as much stress as possible. Another thing that kind of reduced stress during my IVF cycle was I didn't really talk about the cycle as I was going through it as much. Like the first cycle I filmed it and I was putting videos out, but the second cycle I really didn't put that many videos out. And if I did film videos, I didn't look back at them and I still haven't really looked back at them. So they're just sitting on my computer now, but I tried to not think about doing IVF as much as I could and I thought of it more as going to the dentist so I didn't focus on it so much and I kind of just lived my life and didn't think about it or worry about it as much. I, I also didn't tell people I knew who would stress me out about doing IVF again and so we didn't tell as many people this time around and not really, we really didn't tell that many people at all and so that was made me feel better that I didn't have to talk to people or if things didn't go so great I wouldn't have to tell them the outcome but that's just me like that's what worked better for us I also cut out as much BPA as possible and I got glass water bottles and we got glass Tupperware I don't know if this really made that much of a difference because you really can't get away from BPA it's in pretty much everything so I did that and I kind of stopped using hand sanitizer so I would just, you know, wash my hands instead of using the alcohol hand sanitizer. Um, I also stopped dyeing my hair five months before the egg retrieval and IVF cycle. So I haven't dyed my hair in almost a year. And I also stopped using nail polish. And that's pretty much everything that I could think of that I stopped doing to help um, prepare for IVF and help with my IVF success. I don't know. I feel like the biggest thing was changing clinics and finding a doctor that I liked. And he actually finally officially diagnosed me with PCOS after testing my testosterone and looking at my ovaries. Um, so I think if you're not comfortable with your clinic, that should be the number one thing that you should change. But, um, besides that, all the other stuff, I think the low carb diet helped a lot too. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys and finding a place to start off if you're wanting to change stuff before doing IVF. And, uh, I hope that you have luck in your IVF cycles and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!